Good happy Thursday evening and welcome to this Thursday evening edition of New Hampshire Life with Riley King right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. It is Thursday, March 18, 2021. Good, happy Thursday evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Thursday evening edition of New Hampshire Life with Riley King. I hope you enjoy tonight's edition of New Hampshire Life with Riley King. Let's get started right now. Tonight's edition about the town of Deerfield, New Hampshire. Let's learn about the town of Deerfield, New Hampshire right now. The town of Deerfield, New Hampshire was originally the southwestern part of Nottingham from the original Nottingham grant of 1722. In 1766, the residents petitioned and received permission from the royal governor to become a separate town. Deerfield was settled in the late 1730s. A garrison was built for protection from the Indians near the parade in 1742. The town covers 52 square miles. Its terrain is largely rocky and hilly, lying along the main route between Concord and Portsmouth. The town soon became an active center of trade and commerce and remained so throughout its early history. Several small centers developed and thrived. Shortly after its incorporation, the residents tracked a meeting house on Chase Hill, or what becomes known as Old Center. Deerfield Parade, located along the route to Portsmouth, became quite a busy location with an inn for travelers, a store, and an academy to educate the sons and daughters of doctors, lawyers, and other prominent citizens who lived in Fine homes. Levitt's Hill became the site for a store, a well known ceremony, and a post office. South Road, which also lay on the main high road, quickly became a center of trade, commerce, and hospitality. Education of its children has been an important part of the history of Deerfield. After choosing a site for the meeting house and organizing a church, one of the first matters the early citizens considered was establishment of a grammar school. The first one rooms schoolhouse meant eventually have been established and by the mid 19th century, the town had 15 school districts and 13 school buildings, one within walking distance of almost all children. Each school district operated almost automatically with its own moderator, school board, clerk, and auditor. Four periods of Deerfield's history. Today, Forest has reclaimed much of the town, which had once been primarily cleared. Old stone walls, which marked the edge of mowed fields, have disappeared into the forest, and new trees choke old cellar holes. It should be noted, however, the forest land is important to the community for purposes of 
recreation and conservation. This changing view of the forest value provides a way of dividing the town's history into four periods. Before 1770, the earliest period before 1770 was time of clearing the forest, settling the land, building houses, and interacting the first meeting house. By 1773, the population had reached 911. 1772-1850. The next period was busy and promised times for the town. Several main roads had been laid through the town. One led from Exeter to Concord, Dover's and Bright Fierce's brought people and businesses to the town. They filled taverns like the Mac Tavern on South Road, where a night's accommodations, including drink and song, could be found. Water-powered manufacturing was established, so many of the brooks and rivers, blacksmiths, cobblers, and people pursuing every occupation could be found working at home in early Deerfield. These jobs supplemented the main work of farming. Skills and houses passed from generation to generation. Much of the town's land has remained in the same families for 200 years. By 1820, the population reached 2133, and the forest had been almost completely cleared. After 1850, Deerfield's population began a steady decline, which continued for nearly 100 years. This period saw a forest echoed upon farmland and church congregation dwindled. Reasons for a decline, including unprofitable of farming and advent of railroads to the area. Deerfield was bypassed because of its hilly terrain. Freighters and travelers no longer frequent the Max Tavern. The fiddlers were silent. During this same period, some old farmers became a summer getaway for tourists, and lakes and ponds became popular vacation spots. By 1850, the new center had three churches, a store, a hotel, and a new town hall. During the 1880s, the town began to develop as a modest summer community as tourists began to come to enjoy nearby lakes and mountains. By the census of 1930s, however, the town's population had dropped to near 635 year-round residents following World War II. However, this trend began to revise as commuters working in nearby cities began to buy homes in the country. After 1950, the fourth and current period of Deerfield's history has been chiefly characterized by revelers, revisals of the long population decline. A gradual increase after 1950 became rapid growth during the 1980s, this time around expansion of new economic had been a different effect. Many new residents have been attracted to Deerfield because of its central location in natural in beauty. By 1950, the town's population and traffic patterns had changed significantly, that the town felt it needed a central school. In that year, the George B. White School was built. It was named to honor 
of Mr. George B. White of South Road. Upon his death, his widow auctioned the estate and gave that proceeds to help build the new school. During the 1970s to 1980s, the town's population expanded during the decade, but its population increased to 67% from 1,178 to 1,979. By 1990, the population was around 3,300. Forest lands is again being cleared for new housing and developments is bringing change to the town. The town recognized the need to provide for growth, but it also recognized how periodically Deerfield's heritage is and hopes that its special character will be preserved as the town grows. That was some town history. Now let's go to about Deerfield. From our agricultural roots, Deerfield, New Hampshire has grown into a diverse community with a wide assortment of interests, and we are big enough, 52 square miles, to hold them all. Our reverently small population, less than 5,000, means a lot of that land is undeveloped. We have miles of hiking trails through forests and past wetlands where you can spot signs of deer and moose, beaver dams, and hornet nests. At one time, all of this land was cleared and farmed, but as times changed, so did us in the use of the land. You can still see among the trees and stone walls built by farmers long ago, and a walk in the woods can bring you to many abandoned cellar holes. With a tiny family plot nearby, Deerfield has over 100 cemeteries registered, most of them humbled with field stone markers. Although the era of agriculture has passed, there are still many beautiful activity farms in town. Not so many cows and sheep as there used to be, but plenty of horses. Our farms, Deerfield Fair, is famous, which is the largest and oldest family or native agriculture fair in the Northeast, reflects the rural character that is still alive and well in our town. Teams come from miles around to participate in horse and oxen pulls, and folks bring their best produce, baked and canned goods, to be judged. Competition is fierce, with neighboring communities for the largest pumpkin. The fairground is used for lots of different activities year-round, and powwows to gatherings of ham radio enthusiasts to poultry and horse shows. It may be a small town, but there is never a dull moment. Just about every week there is something going on. Sometimes it's traditional like our old home day celebrations in August and craft fair in November. Sometimes it's new, like the annual art tour, in which Deerfield artists and artists open up their studios and show off their work. We have a remarkable number of very talented people in town, from parteries to painters to photographs. Our library, which is housed in a lovely old soldier's memorial building, has a small gallery where local artists can display their work. Each month, a new collection is featured. Speaking of the library, our town boosts one of the largest book groups in the state. And it isn't only one in town. 
we have our a town of readers and our librarian takes good care of us the library is a friendly place where nobody says shh it's a great resource of information about the town as well as free wi-fi and public access computers our library has in weekly story time and crafts for preschoolers as well as a reading for kids during the summer at BC Park. The town beach, which is located on Pleasant Lake, much of which lies in Deerfield. There's a boat launch as well as many folks in Deerfield go to the lake to fish, swim, and others cool off in the summer. There's a lot of other stuff we do for fun here in Deerfield, and our Parks and Recreation Department keeps us active and fit with dance classes, yoga, Zumba, and a wide variety of sports. There are even field trips arranged to attend Red Sox games. If you'd rather just watch, our Parks and Rec Director is always coming up with new ideas for things to do for all ages. But if your interests are more into educational opportunities, there are lectures and presentations sponsored by town organizers. We are proud of our heritage and we have taken great care to preserve our past for the benefits of those in present. Two organizers, the Town Sponsored Heritage Commission and the Private Deerfield Historical Society are ready to answer your questions about genealogically and our town's past. There's the Historic Museum on the second floor of our town hall and Historic Society meetings, which always include a forensic presentation of some kind. You can find out more about all of these by browsing this website, the town of Deerfield, New Hampshire.com website. On the Heritage Commission page is a link to their website, which is full of old photos, stories, and resources for research. Deerfield residents keep informed through a variety of different media. The Communicator is a monthly newsletter which is delivered to every household and is full of useful information about local events and news. Wondering a, what a bus schedule will be, what a new book are, the new books are in the library, when the scrap drive or town cleanup will be held, what's happening at church, it's in the communicator. There are two main churches in Deerfield. The Deerfield Bible Church, which is an evangelical free church, and the Deerfield Community Church, United Church of Christ. They both do wonderful work in the community, running a food pantry, senior and adult education activities, owl on family counseling, and much more. Volunteers are the heart of Deerfield, working every day to making our community a better and happy place. Volunteers keep Deerfield in informed through the Forum, a virtual newspaper serving our town and surrounding communities. The Forum is a place on the internet where folks can get together to share news, ideas, and opinions. When there is a disaster like the flood, that hit our state a few years ago. The forum is there with up-to-the-minute information on where to go and what to do. During election season, it provides information on the candidates and the issues as well as election results as soon as they are available. And, of course, in a small town, there is word of mouth. We are all neighbors. We know each other and look after each other. Not that we don't have our disagreements and during election season and political debates can get pretty heated. 
we are an FB2 town, so citizens don't need to attend town meetings if they aren't able to. But most of us take an active interest in what goes on in our town and participate in some way on community committees or just attending public hearings and having our say. There are many ways to contribute depending on what is important to you. If it's environmental conservation, you can get involved with the Bear Par Regional Greenways or the Deerfield Conservation Commission. If you love flowers, join the Garden Club and help beautifying lots and corners around town. We have a swap shop at the transfer station, which is a grand source of great stuff. If you volunteer, you get first pick on whatever comes in. And of course, there is the PTO for those who care about our schools and education of our kids. In fact, we have one of the few truly volunteer fire departments in the state formed in 1932. These dedicated citizens work out of a small firehouse located in the center of town between the Soldiers Memorial, which houses the Philbrook James Library and the Town Hall on Church Street, where the two, two main churches of Deerfield are located. This part of the center has been designated in the National Register as the Historic District due to its architecture and historical significance. The old center, a few miles away up on Meeting House Hill Road, is where the first meeting house was built shortly after the town incorporated in 1766. Deerfield was originally part of Nottingham and shares a close history through the bordering acres of Patuckaway, now a state park. Another state park, Bearbrook, has its main entrance in Allenstown but lies largely in Deerfield. Deerfield is a very fortunate town, certainly located with an easy drive to most of the major urban areas of southern New Hampshire, as well as the Lakes region, the White Mountains, and the Atlantic coast. Yet, we are enough off the beaten path that we have retained the rural character that makes us what we are, large enough to provide most of the services people need, yet small enough to retain the sense of community and great pride in who we are. And there are some scenic roads in Deerfield. Here are the following scenic roads that are in Deerfield. Meeting House Hill Road from Route 107 to Old Center Road. Whittier Road from Griffin Road to Dead End. Perry Road from Nottingham Road to Kate Road. Mountain Avenue, known now as Harvey Road. Kate Road, Bean Road and Coffee Town Road. Candy Road and Cole Road and Golf Road. Those are scenic roads in the town of Deerfield. And also, there are some great food places in the town of Deerfield. The first food place is the Lazy Lion. They have great food at the Lazy Lion. The Lazy Lion is located at 4 North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire, 03037. Another good food place is Yanni's Pizza. <laughs> that is located at 8 Raymond Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. Another great place is Ma's Cafe. That is located at 43 North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. And another good place to check out is the Blue Bowl. 
The Believable is open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and closed on all federal holidays. They have, um, about the Believable, um, the Believable has farm to take out meals, hot and cold soup, sandwiches, fresh bread, baked bread, and pastries, and local meat, produce, milk, cheese, honey, syrup, craft beer, local wine, arts and crafts, leather goods, handmade apparels, and so much more at the Blue Bowl. About the Blue Bowl, though, with more than 80 years of service for the town of Deerfield, the Blue Bowl continues to provide access to great local produce, seasonal, hot, and cold prepared foods, and handcraft items created by local and regional artists and crafts people. Visitors can expect a variety of seasonal vegetables, local farm-raised meats, cheese, eggs, scratch-made baked breads and pastries, fresh ground coffee, herbal tea from farm to take out hot and cold prepared meals, craft beer, wine, handmade wooden cutting boards, and hand-turned wooden bowls, hand-spun and dyed wool knitted and hats, felted birds, deer skin, gloves, leather wallets, and belts, handmade candles, birthday and holiday handmade greeting cards, and many other things you may or may not expect to find in a small town general store. To the current customers, thank you for your generous support of this store and our local suppliers. For those who have not had a chance to stop in, we hope you'll come and visit. We think you'll presently surprise with the quality and variety of food and handmade items we have available here at the Blue Bowl. The Blue Bowl is located at 38 North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. And thank you for joining us for this Thursday evening edition of New Hampshire Life with Riley King about the town of Deerfield, New Hampshire. Thank you for watching this Thursday evening edition. Good night and goodbye everyone.